Okay, remember last time we were showing you some excerpts of a magic show, and uh -huh. some of you saw how the girl mysteriously disappeared right in front of the audience. Yeah. And people want to know about that. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the clip again so that those of you that have poor memories can remember <laughs> the context, and then, and then we're going to go in through the skin, through the muscles, right down to the bones of the magic. Are you ready? You know, here we go. Do it in captivity. <laughs> See how she vanished? Oh, yes. That's all we were trying to say is that she's going to vanish. Oh, and she's back. Okay. Safe and sound. Now, how would you do that? How would you make a living soul like that disappear on stage with all those people watching. And you saw, you know, we had to get after her because she was crashing into the magician. And teach her, you never crash into a magician while he's bowing because that's an important that's part of magic, yeah. right? And so we tied up her hands and then we put her under that cape and we tied up some other hands and put them under the cape and then somehow they got their hands untied, they got them out, we had to go tie them back up, well, we're, they all got away, and so we had to lean to magic. Right. But how do you create an illusion to make that happen? Uh, my magic mentor, the guy that gave me the wand that mm -hmm. says, Door of Wonders, which yeah. is one of my treasures, told me that I was okay as a magician. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really impressed him was the engineering of my tricks. Yes. <laughs> and so I want to show you the bones. I want to show you the engineering of how that simple illusion worked. And there's a reason for this because doing magic where you make your own illusions is a lot like doing science. Mm -hmm. Takes the same skills, the same effort, the same tools. Ingenuity. And she's got ingenuity. Did you see that <laughs> right over there? Right it's, there. It's ingen right there. Yeah, an ingenuity. And right okay. Here. <laughs> so let's see what we've got here. And there is the hoodie, and it looks like her head's in there. Okay, now, so we've about got the cloth cover off. Pull it clear off, if you could, please. And there we have the bones. Right, so awesome. we're going to go ahead and show you how these bones work. First of all, we're going to stand it up. Nice and tall. And then PVC there's a little pie. switch that powers it up. you see that? Okay, so the switch has been flipped. And now, Cody, I want you to push it a little bit if you could. Just push it, yeah. See how sturdy it is? So here is the mechanism. First of all, look at these bones. These are PVC pipes with end caps on them. And down through the middle is a strong, stout nylon cord. So that if it pulls tight, it makes them stand like so, including the bottom one. And then the string goes down through and we'll show you on the bottom how that connects. You can see that there is an actuator which is filled with the CO2 gas that pulls on these strings and the strings are pulling against that spring. Can you see the spring there? Well, there's a spring that's all crushed now and lo and behold, let's flip the switch so we can see the spring better. And there's the spring. So those strings are being pulled by this little piston, which tightens the strings, which stiffens the bones, which is really just PVC pipe. So you see how that works. Here we have a CO2 canister. This is full of high pressure CO2, like in soda pop. And it goes over here to this pressure regulator. If you look at this side of the regulator, you can see the, the pressure. We can set the knob for what pressure we need. This is a relay, so when we send a signal to it, it turns the solenoid on and off. This is a, a gas valve that opens and closes when we connect it to electricity. If it opens, then the gas flows through here and actuates the mechanism. Over here is a doorbell. This is a doorbell from the hardware store, and it has a actuator. When you push that actuator, it triggers this to trigger the illusion so we can do it remotely. 
Stand up the bones, and you can see the PVC pipe standing up. Now we're going to turn on the power switch, and it makes it okay, stick. Now we're going to go ahead and cover the bones up with some skin. And skin is just a piece of black fabric that's been sewn like a little bag to fit over and hide all the mechanisms. So can you see about how that's set up? And then it folds around the bottom and we hook Velcro to keep it in place. Now we've got the cape up over the dancer and you can see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and put it on the appliance, okay? Okay, so she pulls it off. It just fits over the top of the cover. We set it on. Notice that the hood on top has a wire to hold it up so it looks like her head's in it. We have it so it falls back before she gets in it. Push it back and show. So it's like that to start. And then when we put her in, you notice we pull the wire up over her head so that it looks like there's a head in there even though we're not <laughs> seeing it. Okay? Okay, I want you to notice that you can see her feet underneath the illusion. Now, when it drops, those feet have to be hidden. So, uh, Carolyn, can you push the button, please? And let's see if the robe covers it. And it does. <laughs> You guys are crashing into me while I'm bowing. Don't you know you never crash into a magician while he's bowing? Ropes, ropes. <laughs> now there's going to have to be punishment right over here. You can't let these dancers get away with things like this or they just get out of hand, you know what I mean? Okay, you're, you're in captivity. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Somebody can use your phone. how it's done. So that's a lot of work. That was a lot of work. To hide some shoes, <laughs> isn't it? To make an effect. Come but on, you notice it took a CO2 cartridge, yep. and it took a solenoid and a relay mm -hmm. and a doorbell. Why a doorbell? The doorbell is a wireless doorbell, so you can put it in your home, you don't have to run a wire. You just stick it outside. And I thought, perfect. So I rigged the doorbell so that it would make the bones fall. And all you had to do is push that little button and it would all fall, which is kind of fun, huh? Magic is fun if you can turn your magic interest into a way to motivate you to figure out how to put that kind of stuff together. And remember, all my tricks were made while I was still in college. Boy, you can learn a lot of things. And the very same thinking, the same creativity. How do you make it fall down so it covers the shoes? How do you do that? How do you make it work remotely? Those are the same kind of challenges you're going to have in business. And there's the same kind of challenges you're going to have in ballet and choreography and all of the other careers you could get into. Remember, that when you have a lot of money, you need to make good investments. And some of you are a little shy on money, but what you have right now is time. And time can be turned into money. And there's no better way to invest your money, which is your time, than in yourself. Invest that time gathering knowledge, which empowers you to do really great things. 
Study hard, stay off the streets, and please stay away from R51. <laughs> <laughs>